rushing our panelists forward, but uh, Minister Hanegbi, who will be joining us for our next session, will be arriving a little bit earlier than planned, so therefore we're compressing the session. Uh, our uh, next speaker, Professor uh, Theophanos uh, of the University of Nicosia, um, has, as I said, been here in Israel and spoken to our forums several times. Look forward to your remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I would like to also uh, thank the organizers for this invitation, which gives me the opportunity to share with you some views in relation to the issues under consideration, energy cooperation in the Eastern Mediterranean, the case of Cyprus strategic and political implications. It's essential that we underline them, you know, to put this into context, understand the importance of the Eastern Mediterranean that has been done throughout the day. I will not be repetitive. Uh, assess the new developments in the Eastern Mediterranean, focus on the specific case of Cyprus, and also see the issues uh, at stake. Now, the case of the Eastern Mediterranean, throughout times it has been one of the most important regions in the world, as it is the meeting place of three major uh, world religions. It's a meeting point between the East and the West, of North and South, of trading and energy routes. And throughout time there has been a struggle for domination. Cypriots, even if they are not historians or educated, they understand that because uh, Cyprus, which is in the heart of the Eastern Mediterranean, over time has been under the control or influence of the dominant power or powers in the Eastern Mediterranean. I could selectively refer to, you know, from all times, to the attack and conquest of Cyprus by the Persians and the liberation of the island with the help of the mainland Greeks in the distant past. I could also refer to the Roman times, the Byzantium, the Venetians, the Ottomans, and the British Empire. As a matter of fact, historically speaking, you know, when Cyprus uh, changed hands in 1878, it was from a development that took uh, part not in Cyprus, but in the Balkans, and when the Sultan had uh, required the support of uh, Western powers and gave uh, Cyprus to Britain in order to get the uh, help to face, you know, at the time, Tsarist Russia. Now, why am I saying this? Because many times we focus on bicommunal negotiations and so on, while most developments take place outside the context of Cyprus, and this is essential to remember. I would also argue that the tragedy in 1974 is not unrelated to the Cold War. We heard today some, uh, you know, narratives. I would be very short because this is not the topic. When Turkey invaded Cyprus, 20th of July, you know, it uh, it was the Greek coup against President Makarios, and Turkey, when it made the uh, announced when it invaded Cyprus, that it's coming peacefully to reestablish a constitutional order in in Cyprus and also to protect the Turkish Cypriot minority community. Minority. 23rd of July, we had the collapse of the junta and the Putschist regime in Cyprus. Yet Turkey continued and continued and uh, occupied almost 38% uh, of the island and destroyed the constitutional order. In relation to the Turkish Cypriot community, if you ask most Turkish Cypriots today, they feel the suffocation of settlers. Uh, so Turkish Cypriot became a minority in the occupied northern part as well. Uh, uh, the Turkish objectives uh, on the island uh, are clear. Be that as it may, the Republic of Cyprus today is a member of the European Union and a state with a very constructive presence and contribution in the Eastern Mediterranean and is striving to protect its independence and also to retain its territorial integrity within the framework of a functional uh, integrationalist federal model. Recently, we witnessed the discovery of huge amounts of hydrocarbons. One could hope for cooperation with gains for all parties involved. The reality, though, is much more complex. Um, there are plenty of theoretical perspectives on regional cooperation, not only in the Eastern Mediterranean, but beyond, in several aspects, including social, economic, political, and cultural. 
In the case of the Eastern Mediterranean, it seems that over time, and historically, we have witnessed more antagonisms rather than a spirit of cooperation. And to the present day, that, that's what we observe. What's the potential for the Eastern Mediterranean reserves? It's promising, and it remains to be seen. At the same time, we see the EU efforts to decrease dependence on Russian energy, and I think it will not be that wise to link this with the Eastern Mediterranean reserves. Eastern Mediterranean reserves, they would uh, help the European Union uh, diversify its options, not replace uh, you know, the, the Russian alternative. So while, while Eastern Mediterranean energy resources would be utilized for European consumption, uh, I don't think it necessarily challenges uh, Russian objectives or Russian interests. Now, the issue in the Eastern Mediterranean is how do we get this uh, natural gas to the markets? Do we choose LNGs? Do we choose pipelines? And which pipelines? And this, we had been discussing this uh, today. Now, the massive Egyptian findings in Zor in, in 2015 increased hopes for the Cypriot and the Israeli economic, exclusive economic zones and boosted the third licensing round in Cyprus. And more firms were interested. Coming back to the issue of the pipeline, we have heard it, that there are very serious political uh, considerations that uh, push for the Eastern Mediterranean pipeline because it's important to have reliability. And uh, there is no doubt that this requirement is um, is met with the Eastern Mediterranean pipeline. Now, the economic considerations, and we ask about the expenses and that it may need uh, uh, subsidization. This, of course, cannot be ruled out, but it remains to be seen whether the, there is consistency with the political will so that this will be eventually implemented. We had in the Eastern Mediterranean also tripartite agreements, Greece, Cyprus, and Israel, Greece, Egypt, and Israel. And the further enhancement of these agreements will be a step in the right direction. We consider the expression of interest by the United States, France, and Italy as a very important development. Now, coming back to Turkey. It will be interesting if Turkey expresses interest to join this network of cooperations. But there are some preconditions. Of course, Ankara has to respect international law as well as the independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity of all countries involved, including the Republic of Cyprus. I remind you that uh, Turkey describes the Republic of Cyprus as defunct. And uh, at the same time, it uh, supports and enhances the legal regimes in the northern part of Cyprus. Now, the Cyprus problem, inevitably, although in theory you could say that Cyprus problem and energy issues are two independent issues, inevitably, they are interrelated. Cyprus proceeded in accordance with the international law to delineate its exclusive economic zone. We had agreements with Egypt in 2003, Lebanon in 2007, and Israel in uh, 2010. Now, there are three countries that we also have to agree. One is Greece, Syria, and Turkey. Now, the case of Greece and Cyprus, you may wonder why has this not taken place so far? Well, it has been pointed earlier that there are more complexities with what Turkey claims and what is the potential exclusive economic zone of Greece. It's the issue of Castellorizo and Rodos. Just to share with you the following. Today, Turkey occupies not only 38% of the territory of Cyprus. That includes 53% of its seashores. And that has implications. At the same time, Turkey uh, disputes 25% of the potential Greek exclusive economic zone, talking about Greece's, and 70% of Cyprus potential uh, exclusive economic zone. And the issue is that even the, what Turkey recognizes, it belongs to Cyprus, it will not, it doesn't want to allow Cyprus to proceed on its own, it would like to uh, see the Turkish Cypriots participating in the decision-making processes all the way. Of course, 
uh, it's clear what is taking it's taking place. Um, I would say it would be a step in the right direction if these three countries, Greece, Republic of Cyprus, and Turkey, address the relevant issues to the International Court of Justice at The Hague. I mean, um, and I think this should be a step in the right direction, and so on. Now, in the meantime, because life goes on, uh, the Republic of Cyprus has already engaged different companies. We have any total uh, Cocas from South Korea, Noble, Delek, ExxonMobil, Shell, and Qatar Petroleum. The easy part is to attract these companies to get involved. The difficult part is to unearth the gas and transfer it to the markets. Um, in February this year, any announced uh, discovery in Block 6, uh, which is considered by Turkey as lying within its own continental shelf. Later in the same month, Turkish warships intercepted and its drilling block three and stopped the company's ship from reaching the drilling point. With noble energy, uh, that was not repeated. I remind you that in 2011, uh, noble energy made a moderate discovery of the Aphrodite in block 12. And recently, there have been explorations in block 10. The results could be announced in the next few weeks. Many Cypriots, when they saw, for example, uh, any and mobile and how the US acted in Italy and all that, many Cypriot commentators have said that perhaps it should have been better for Cyprus, given the odds in the Eastern Mediterranean, to have adopted an even more targeted approach and choice in licensing its blocks. I don't want to say anything more about this issue, but this is something that should, we should think about. Now, Turkey, what's what is this, uh, the aberration now? Turkey and the Turkish Cypriot leadership disapprove of the efforts of the Republic of Cyprus to search for natural gas and to explore and exploit it. At the same time, they use, um, Turkey wants to use its, its power uh, to stop uh, uh, Cypriot uh, actions. And at the same time, okay, they said that anything taking place in this Mediterranean concerning Cyprus uh, Turkey cannot uh, be ignored, and so on with the, uh, the so-called TRNC. The aberration is that Turkey invokes these rights, and TRNC invokes these rights uh, by, you know, with the Constitution of 1960. At the same time, they don't accept it. If Turkey respects the 1960 Constitution, it has to respect it comprehensively, and the same applies for the Turkish Cypriots. We cannot um, selectively choose what is interest from a constitution which has been violated. And the other thing which is clear, I don't think Turkey is in Cyprus for the Turkish Cypriots. I mean, many times if you follow Turkish, uh, even Davut Oglu, an ex-foreign minister of Turkey, and other Turkish officials, even before 74, they said that even if there is not a single Turkish Cypriot on the island, Turkey would still have a dominant interest on, on that island, because it is important. So the issue about Turkish Cypriots, I'm not sure it can be, it, it can be bought. So I, I think it is essential. What Turkey would like, wants to do, is to turn the protector, you know, Cyprus into a protectorate using the Turkish Cypriots and the settlers. We have heard the Annan plan. There has been an excellent article on the Annan plan by Professor Shlomo Abineri, 29th of February, 2004, when it called the plan, that is the European Union and United Nations favorite occupation. I think it's one of the best articles that I have, yes, uh, that I have read so far. And I think the same uh, is continuing today. I want to ask the following question. I wonder whether Turkey, we have heard a lot of things about Turkey, about Kurds today, whether Turkey is prepared to grant the same privileges that is demanding for the Turkish Cypriots and the illegal settlers to the Kurds of Turkey. My understanding is that if the Kurds of Turkey request what the Turkish Cypriots and the settlers request in Cyprus, they will be charged with high prison. Turkey is 80,000 square kilometers and it wants a unitary state and everything controlled from Ankara. Cyprus, an island less than 10,000 square kilometers, uh, 80 times smaller than Turkey, 
Turkey would like to have rotation presidencies, constituent states, and all that. If you follow what you're suggesting for us, we'll follow as well. So I think this is clear. I'm closing. Energy policy and plans. Well, whether we like it or not, the balance or imbalance of power influences the outcomes. The issue of cooperative approach for the exploitation of East Mediterranean natural gas reserves, it's important. Turkey aspires to be dominant power in the East Mediterranean. It is essential, though, to assess the relations of Turkey with Egypt, Israel, Greece, and Cyprus, and indeed all neighbors. A few years ago, Turkey declared a policy of zero problems with its neighbors. The reality is that Turkey has problems with every single neighboring country. The greco turkish issues in the Aegean, the case of Castellorizo, that the limitation of their exclusive economic zones in the Eastern Mediterranean also affect the Cypriot easy with Turkey. I will also say that what is happening in the Eastern Mediterranean in relation to Turkey and Cyprus is not only of concern to, uh, to Cypriots and Turkey. I think the outcome also influences the interest of other countries and players in the area and beyond as well. Any prospects of cooperation with Turkey? The insistence of Turkey to turn Cyprus into a protectorate and also to be the dominant power in the Eastern Mediterranean is a major issue. It, it, no self-respecting country can accept that. Sign, you know, Cyprus sign agreements with Egypt, Israel, and Lebanon. I repeat, it would be good when the time comes that we sign similar agreements with Greece, Turkey, and, and Syria. And what is not agreed, uh, we can go to the uh, international court at the Hod, and let's have arbitration. Eastern Mediterranean countries have the option to capitalize on their offshore natural gas discoveries and also engage in a framework of multilateral cooperation among themselves as well as with the other stakeholders. Cyprus, Greece, Israel and Egypt have paved the way towards this direction. Turkey is a major player in the Eastern Mediterranean, and it could be part of these developments. The normalization of Ankara's relations with the Republic of Cyprus, the withdrawal of the occupation troops, the eventual uh, resolution of the Cyprus problem, as well as a spirit of cooperation with the other regional players are essential prerequisites for such a constructive development. In the absence of such a cooperative approach by all players involved, developments will become complex, but they will still continue to unfold. Thank you.